these are tiny robots, and they are awesome. They're the size of an ant. My students and I have been working on these for the last 10 years at the University of Maryland. Because they're so small, these robots can do big things, from inspecting jet engines to minimally invasive surgery. One of the interesting things with robotics, if you look at biology, and we model a lot of large robots after these bigger organisms, so things like a cheetah, as you've seen, or a dog. But as you get really small, it's really challenging how you engineer something at that size scale, from a cockroach down to an ant. And so one of the things that we like to do, instead of trying to copy the animal, is to take some inspiration from how it moves and use that to create a simplified engineering solution uh, and potentially even a better engineering solution for the robot itself. So we don't have to make the most complex ant-looking robot, but we have to capture what an ant does. This is Ryan St. Pierre. He was a PhD student at the University of Maryland, and together we wanted to explore how we could make robots at this size move more effectively and efficiently. So I've been looking at how small insects and robots run at really, at really fast speeds, and we want to understand how they do that and how we can make robots that, ha that are similarly fast. So a lot of the times we think about these robots in um, instances of search and rescue or deployment, and time is a really big factor in those things. So you would want your robots to run around very quick and explore new areas especially if you're looking after a natural disaster. So going small has an enormous number of challenges, right? So if I'm trying to make a big robot, you can go buy a motor for your custom-made robot off the shelf, right? But now, when you're trying to make something really tiny, you have to make the motor in potentially the smallest and lightest way possible. The first robot I made had completely smooth legs, and there was a ton of slipping between the leg and the ground, and it was losing a lot of power that it could be applying towards moving forward. We molded some new legs for the robot. We put them on the robot, and I stuck it in a Petri dish, and I flipped the Petri dish right over, and it was still stuck to the Petri dish. And so one of the things we had to do is actually go in and oxidize the legs, meaning we made them a little less sticky, effectively coating them with a little bit of glass. Um, and that enabled them to have the right amount of adhesion with the ground. There's still a lot of work to be done, and that's really exciting that there's a lot of opportunity to research this area. But what it's giving us is insight into how ants run effectively. And the more we understand that, the more we can build robots to take advantage of those dynamics. Thank you.